Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! Uh -huh. Woo! See? Greetings. How is everyone doing? <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to Lee Reacts. Hope everyone's having a good day. I know I am. And we are back with a Patreon request from our patron, Sean M., who also sent in this beautiful Viking poster right there. You can hardly see it, but it's there. Thank you very much, Sean. You rock, bro. And we're we'll listening to his Patreon request uh, for this month. It is by the band Nectar, which I have never heard of. Uh, this is going to be a first listen. Um, and the track is called A Tab in the Ocean. I believe you right. What is this? Yeah, A Tab in the Ocean. All right. It is from their second album, the German-based English progressive rock band Nectar, released in 1972, November. And it's a got a double reissue, too. Huh? Well, let's get right into it. This is a long one, so we don't want to waste no time. If you guys aren't subscribed, please help a brother out. Click that icon right down there. I'd really appreciate it. It takes like two seconds. It's absolutely free and really helps channel out. We just passed 8K uh, yesterday with that Beatles video, which is crazy. Thank you so much, guys. That was uh, probably the... This is like my third video that went viral for my standards, you know. Um, it's almost at 10K, up, <laughs> not even after a day, which is crazy, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Let's go. Uh, Tab of the Ocean by Nectar. Three, two, one, hit it. Live from the chair of eternal back pain. <laughs> We're just listening to all kinds of mind expanding music the past couple days. It's a new year, baby. <laughs> Let's do it. Very Tony Banks like keys. That sounds like Genesis, the keys, that's crazy. What is that song? What is that song? Is that like Firth? I swear I've heard that key progression. And acid was so important to what happened to the music. I keep thinking of that, it's crazy. but it's all in that rhythm right there.
Ooh, good transition. Definitely like 60s vocals right there. That's late 60s vocals. That's cool. I cracked it again. Damn phone. <laughs> It almost sounds like it's behind a wall or something. It's so weird. No, this sounds like it's from either Musical Box or Return of the Giant Hogweed. That's what that key progression's from. I knew it. Guitars sound crazy. It's like a little drum line right there. Five different songs in one so far. It's crazy. I hear a lot of similarities of like early Genesis in this. Not even just in the keys. That album cover is crazy, bro. What the hell? Ooh. It's a really good riff.
good. This is like almost proto metal, like in the drumming. That's so crazy, I didn't realize that at first. His progressions are crazy. Wow, that is so cool. <laughs> It also reminds me of Green Slate a little bit. I don't know. I don't know exactly why, but it does. Seventy two, bro. Like, what the fuck? This is amazing. <laughs> Sorry if I haven't been like enthusiastic. I definitely think this is amazing, though. Like, what the fuck? It took a while to build up, but once they got there, holy shit. My random thought while thinking this, or while thinking, uh, <laughs> my random thought while listening to this is, I think it's crazy how we're seen for our scars and not for our beauty. Our scars are what truly define us, even though they say beauty is the most important thing. It's the scars that you'll always be reminded by. That's all. See, like, how is this band not more well known? Like, is this like their only hit, or like, I don't know, man, because this is so good. Uh. <laughs> I hear Pink Floyd, I hear Genesis, I hear a little bit of Led Zeppelin. Green Slade, it's crazy. But then there's also this other element that I've never heard before, I think. I can't put my finger on it exactly.
The guitar reminds me of something, but I just can't put my finger on it. What is it? It's more of a modern band. What a ride this has been, dude. It really has been. <laughs> like, wow. So many different combinations of styles and genres here. <clears throat> and every idea, like the transitions have been almost seamless. That's the musical box, bro. Or the giant hogweed, I can't remember which one. I can hear Peter Gabriel singing right now. Like that is so crazy, dude. Like that is so, that is definitely that song. It's so weird hearing a different idea, like formed from it and used in a different way. Roy. Al Brighton, Nick Brockett, Alan Freeman, Mo, and Ron Howard. I love how they're building from it differently, too. Ooh, slow it down. Whoa. The sun peeked through a little bit again that time. Wow, end it with the ocean sounds crashing upon the beach, the waves. Damn, that was really fucking good. <laughs> good pick, Sean. That was really, really good. That is definitely worth a 17 minute listen. Uh, but that was totally from that key line, is totally from Musical Box or Giant Hogweed. I can't remember what which one exactly, but it's one of those two. Um, that was fantastic. Um, so many different ideas stitched together. Like it was almost like six different songs, like just put into one big song basically. And they had different ideas and like the transitions from the idea to the next was like I said, seamless. Um, Roy Albrighton on the guitars and lead vocals. Um, I thought the guitars really shined in some of these parts, um, especially uh, with his vocals too. I think he definitely was probably other than him, the drummer and Alan Freeman, the keyboardists, with the backup vocals, Mellotron, he was definitely the star of this show, man. Um, he killed it. He really did. Having the vocals in only certain sections and instrumental like passages that go on for minutes, you know, like they didn't lean heavily on the vocals at all. But when the vocals did come through, they were great. Um, uh, his guitar, though, definitely the highlight of this for me with the keyboards as well. I, he, his riffs were there was something about them that just reminded me of another band. Like that's something I can't put my finger on and it's making me really mad, but the guitars reminded me of a more modern band actually, like maybe from like the eighties or the nineties, the way that he played it and like sort of like the chords he was playing and how he played them. They definitely reminded me of something, but I can't remember. Ugh. That's okay though. Next time, baby. Um, I really, when you did hear the bass, it was kind of at the end or like in the transitionary passages, but like when they were in the midst of the shit, you didn't really hear the bass that much. But when you did hear it, it was good thumping real low. It was good on the lower register. Um, the drumming, like I said, the drumming was really good in the beginning and like the first couple sections was a very marching style sort of drumming. Sort of like a little drummer boy. It was good. But as the passage like evolved and hit like, I think seven minutes on, his drumming changed into like a more of a progier style drumming. Um, kind of, I might have the minutes wrong, but 
Um, it's almost like as the song evolved, so did he with like how he was doing the drumming. Um, the whole song went through these different passages and like felt like different songs at times. But like there was one point where it reached, I think around maybe nine or ten minutes, where I felt like everything converged at once, and then a whole new song was formed at that point. And then for that until the end of the song, and then they brought back the the um, musical box or whatever the nursery crime key line. Um, they brought that back at the end and finished with that and kind of had a climax again off half of that and just sort of let it fade out. Um, wow, there's a lot there. Uh, did I talk about everybody? Oh, there's a whole Mick Brockett is lighting projections and visual effects. I didn't even see that. So I'm guessing these guys were big on their visuals and stuff and uh, concerts and everything because they have a whole guy who does it. So And he's named with the personnel, so he must be very important. Um, I would definitely watch like a live version of this. I bet like the live versions of this are crazy. I bet there's whole visual stuff that goes with it. And there's probably a whole story imagery wise that goes along with the song. Cause like you could tell from the uh, album cover that there's something to this album more than just like, there might be a concept or something to it just from that weird looking dude and his little, <coughs> whenever I see those things, I always, it's always some kind of like fake space drugs or something like that, but I don't know what it's called, but I know it's an actual thing, but it's very trippy design. That album cover was very, very unsettling, but also inviting at the same time. It's kind of like that, uh, Zappa song we did this morning and it was, uh, very, very unsettling, but it was very alluring at the same time. It's kind of cool when you can have that cognitive dissonance. And another thing I was thinking about while uh, actually in the beginning of the song just how important the album cover is and like your CD cover or whatever, the sleeves that come in, the vinyls and stuff, the imagery that you set forth in your album covers and all that, that is, we're visual people, especially nowadays. So the audio is always going to be formed from the idea that they see through that. Like it's always going to be filtered through that image. So they're going to be imagining the music in their heads as this, like with this image because I was listening to that and imagining that weird green dude, you know what I'm saying? And just that's where the song took me and other ideas. So if you've got just like some weird abstract cover <clears throat> that sometimes it works sometimes, but I feel like you really should have like actual artwork that is like developed alongside with the music. So the, uh, the artist or whoever does the cover, or maybe it's someone in the band does a cover it. Uh, it's like, I think it's just very important because that image is what everything is filtered through and you're always going to, imagine that image in your head almost or like maybe even a concert you saw for the first time you heard the song you know and then the, that's from the stage visuals too you know so i always think the the, <clears throat> the video and image side of music is either not taken seriously enough or it's um i don't know what the word would be kind of a second thought afterburner sort of thing you know or it's kind of a joke or they just make some whatever shit up because sometimes i guess it doesn't really matter but for progressive music, especially when we're dealing with metaphysics, maybe, or higher ideas and, you know, stuff than usual, I think the image is very important, especially in this generation when everything's on these things now, you know, and everything is visual, visual, visual. I feel like audio is like slowly and slowly getting pushed out just for like, so the visual is king, you know, for years, the for radio, um, transistor stuff, you know, tapes, CD, it's always been audio, but now that there's video, music videos, the imagery is almost overtaking the music at this point, especially in not like the modern stuff. Like it's now, it's so important in the videos that, uh, that some of the videos nowadays are, especially for modern, like all rap music or even rock music. It's very disturbing. It's very, very hypersexualized. It's very fast moving imagery, cut, cut, edit, edit. It's like they're trying to feed as many ideas into you at once as they can. And they have little imagery shots in between the main shots. That's sort of like subliminal messaging. I know Stanley Kubrick did that too. Like there's all kinds of famous examples of that's how you get people is when they're not thinking they're being propagandized to, you know, that's the only way to really get an idea through is to that for them to think they're not actually being preached at. That's they've lost that nowadays though. Like they just preach, preach, preach. And they're wondering why nobody thinks the way they do. And if they do, they're not who they want them to be. You know, um, you actually have to try, you know, you can't just bullshit your way. You can't bullshit a bullshitter. We're all bullshitters. Like Come on, you guys can do better. Propagandize better, guys. God damn. <laughs> I don't know where this came from. 
Uh, but yeah, that was a great song. Thank you again, Sean, for that great request. Um, I'm going to stop yapping about whatever now. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Um, I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And if you guys didn't know, we have a Patreon. Raha. If you would like to make a request just like Sean did, you can join the Patreon, join the $10 Super Patron tier up. You get one free request a month. Uh, the $15 member, exclusive member, I think that's what it's called. I uh, get one free video chat, visit, whatever you want to do. You can drive down. We can hang out. I don't care. It don't really matter. Um, but uh, it's up to you guys. Whatever. We can talk about whatever. Do whatever. I'm uh, I'm all yours. And if you want to just send in a request, you're not a big reoccurring payment person, which I've heard uh, multiple times, and I completely understand because I forget about them too. And that you could be, char you might actually hate my channel and leave. And then you might be getting charged for the next year and you wouldn't know best way to support the channel in the most direct way is the paypal the link is in the description that's for tips requests and everything else thank you for watching guys thank you for watching all the way to the end and if you did uh use the word charger in your comment and i'll know you paid attention bye <laughs>